This video will give you a deep dive into Argo events. We'll talk about everything we spoke about in a three minute introduction, plus additionally talk about the custom resources and particular controllers that we execute. On top of that, we'll show some additional demos with some more interesting features. Argo Events is an event-driven workflow automation framework for Kubernetes. In a layperson's talk, you can trigger an action based on some kind of event, and you can do this using Kubernetes. There are 22 different kinds of event that we can listen to. These include queue-based events such as ActiveMQ, Kafka, or AWS, file-based events such as S3 buckets or HDFS, and uh, webhook endpoints such as GitHub, GitLab, Slack, Stripe, and others. We can then take 11 different kinds of action. AWS Lambda or OpenWhisk are function type actions you can take. We can make any kind of HTTP request. We can send messages to a queue-based system such as Kafka or Nuts. And actually we can execute any kind of Kubernetes resource creation. That allows you to make any kind of trigger that you want to, as long as you can package it into an image. Both of these types of actions and events that we can listen to can be completely customized as well using a generic customization system. Let's talk about some of the key terms within inside the Argo events universe. An event source describes something you can listen to. This is typically an event that happens outside your cluster or inside your cluster. The job of the event source is to send that event to an event bus. This is an example of the CRD specification that we use to describe an event. You can use a single Kubernetes resource to describe one or more event sources. And in this example, we create a single event source called webhook, which listens on port. Uh, sorry, in this example, we create a single one that is our webhook called example that listens on port 12,000 to an endpoint on the path slash example. A sensor is the second most important type of resource in the Argo events universe. A sensor listens to the event bus for certain events and conditionally triggers some actions, which brings us to our final important kind of entity, a trigger. A trigger is just the action to take. So for example, creating a Kubernetes resource or invoking a Lambda function. Here's an example of the resource specification for, for a sensor. Now this contains one or more triggers in this example, we have a HTTP trigger that will send a uh, message, a post message to that URL. And it's going to listen to an event called example uh, that's uh, also a type of Minio. So this would be webhook in the example in our previous, ex uh, previous version. This is the architecture of Argo events. For Argo events, there are usually two key namespaces. One is the system namespace, which Argo Events is installed into, and the other is the user in, uh, namespace, it, which actually does the job of listening to events and triggering actions. When you create a resource in your user namespace, the event source controller, event bus controller, and sensor controller will create the appropriate resources with inside your user namespace. Typically, for an event source or a sensor, this is a particular pod with a configuration attached to it. For the case of the event bus controller, it's a stateful set to ensure that we do not lose any messages. This is, event bus is typically done using NATs that you can use other systems. And then the event source deployment, which is usually one or more pods, will listen to various types of events, create an event on the event bus, which will then be transported to the sensor to trigger whatever actions need to be triggered. Additionally, we can do things like parameterize the actions based on the event's content, and I'll be showing you a demo of that shortly, filter events based on conditions, and only trigger actions when several conditions are true. Argo Events is cloud events compliant and works with various different systems. And Argo is a CNCF incubating project. The fundamentals. Demo time. Firstly, we install Argo Events. This installs key components such as the controllers, roles, and bindings. Then we install Event Bus, who's responsible for transporting messages from the event sources to the sensors and triggers. Now we're ready to use it. Let's install a very common event source, a calendar. This particular calendar will produce an event every 10 seconds. Next, I'm going to install a webhook event source. This will listen to messages on port 1200 or 12,000. Finally, I'm going to connect them together to a sensor, which will create a Kubernetes resource. In this case, it'll be a workflow. I'll set up my port forward. I'll send my first message to that webhook. 
there you go. You can see the messages flowing through the system and we can check to see if our workflow was created. There it is. Demo, parameterization. In many common use cases, you'll probably want to parameterize your trigger. This means taking some piece of information from the event that, that triggered it and using that as part of the trigger itself. Argo Events uses the Cloud Events specification. So events when they're received from a source, such as Git or a HTTP webhook, uh, are formatted into a mixture of context and data. And the bullet, this example shows you an example here where the content type is XML, the data shows you the actual XML, and then the things like source, subject, and a universal identifier. Okay, so let's set up our system. First things first is we'll create our webhook. And we'll start a port forward in that because we're going to use that shortly. Then we're going to create an example that uses parameterization. Now let's take a quick look at the YAML. You can see that we have our dependencies describing that we're dependent on a webhook named example. We can have our template here, which is an Argo workflow. This workflow is the hello Argo workflow that prints out a message to the console. Then we take from the context the type of message uh, and the, the value, and that's passed into the specification to determine what that will be. Now, in, the, in this case, the type of context key will be webhook. Let's test this out. We can see the message has occurred there. If we go look at the webhooks, we can see the new webhook has started up here. Let's have a look at the logs. And you can see that it's printed webhook out. Demo conditions. Conditions allow you to connect events, sources, and triggers in new and interesting ways. Typically, you'll use this when you want to prevent a trigger firing under certain circumstances or encourage it in others. Let's look at an example. Okay, we're going to create a very standard webhook event source that you've seen before, and additionally, a min IO event source, which waits for files to be dropped into an S3 bucket. We'll connect those to a sensor with two triggers. Let's set up a port forward and send a message so we can see how this works. You can see that the webhook event source triggered and only resulted in the top workflow being triggered. We can see that workflow in the workflows view. Now let's have a look at the YAML that produced this. You can see you have two dependencies for this sensor one on the webhook event source and one on the MinIO event source called test.webhook webhook and test step minio. We additionally have a condition on each of the triggers that determines which of those dependencies must be fulfilled before the trigger is fulfilled. To find out more about Argo events, go to our GitHub, check out our blog, or come and join our Slack channel to ask any questions.